Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to start your school year off with a clean, clutter-free Google Classroom. Let's get started. Welcome to another video everyone. My name is Gabriel Carrillo. Thank you for tuning in and checking out this video. If you like this video and the content, make sure that you click on that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you get notified when new episodes and videos like this are published. So on that note, let's get started. Here we are and I've got two Google Classrooms. Both of these have the exact same content. However, they look a little bit different because of the settings and notifications that I have on. So let's take a look at both of these Google Classrooms. I've got one here and I'm going to kind of be like an eye doctor, you know, which one looks better? One or two? One or two? One or two. So here we go. This is our first Google Classroom. This is our stream. Take a look at that really quickly. I'm going to scroll through really quickly. That way you can see what I've got here. Looks like your typical Google, Google Classroom, right? Now let's go to the second Google Classroom. So there's our second Google Classroom. Looks a little bit different, okay? Let's go to the classwork section of each one of these. I'm gonna go back to Google Classroom number one. We'll call this one Google Classroom number one. Let's go back to the classwork section and you can see here I've got my three assignments. Let's go to Google Classroom number two to the classwork section and you'll notice that I still have three assignments. However, it looks a little bit different. Why is that? You guessed it, ladies and gentlemen, I have topics for this one. Now let's also go back to the original Google Classroom, number one, back to the stream really quickly, and you'll notice, whoa, one more time, let's try this one more time, one or two, one or two, one or two. What did you notice about the stream? That's right, in Google Classroom, number one, every single time that an assignment was posted, there's a notification here in the stream saying that Gabriel Creel has posted a new material, new assignment. As a matter of fact, you probably didn't even notice that I have an announcement for my students down there at the bottom. Why? Because it gets pushed down every time a new assignment or material is posted. So let's go ahead and go through our settings to make sure that we have a clutter-free stream for ourselves, any co-teachers we have, our students, and our parents. So let's go ahead and go in. The way I did that for Google Classroom number two is this. You go to your settings, and I really wish Google, if you are if you somehow stumble across this video, please fix this so we can make this a default setting because you do have to do this for every classroom that you build. When you go to your class settings, scroll down a bit and you will notice that the stream is students can post or comment. I always like to shut that off to only teachers can post or comment. That way it's a lot easier to start the year off with the reins real tight. And then as you get to start building that culture in your classroom, just kind of open them up for students to post. However, classroom on the stream, it always defaults to show condensed notifications, but we want to change that to hide notifications. And what that does is it makes it so that every time an a, an a classwork assignment is posted, students have to actually go to the classwork section. It doesn't show up in the stream. Remember, we want our students into the habit of checking classwork in the classwork section and not the stream because it's gonna get cluttered and before you know it, when, things, when there's things everywhere, nothing's important. If you want something important in the stream, then make sure it's the only thing on the stream, such as notifications. So that's what's missing for cl from classroom number one, actually, that this setting is still set to show condensed notifications. And if I click hide notifications, you'll notice that that automatically gets cleaned up. And now all we have here is our notification to our students. So now the second thing that you might've noticed as well is at in Google Classroom number one, there are no topics, just kind of like a dumping ground for assignments. Let's go to Google Classroom number two, one or two, one or two, okay? Number two, number two, the classwork section is a little bit more organized because I've got actual topics. And the way to do that is you create topic. And here is where you can sit down with your team, with your grade level, with your content area, whatever it is, whatever organization, club or class or content that you teach. And here's where you can got you guys can start thinking about how you are going to plan your year out. Are you going to do it by week? Are you going to do it by unit, by subunit, by chapter? So this is where you guys can have those conversations and start building those topics. And then no matter what, any assignment that you build. So if I go to create assignment, make sure that it does indeed fall under a topic. Okay. So that is a two quick tips on how to organize your Google Classroom. Number one, make sure that you hide notifications on the stream. That way the only thing that gets posted there are actual announcements. That way the classwork section is nice and clean with assignments. Number two is 
building those topics. That way it's easier for our students to navigate, to find based on chapter, unit, or week. The third tip that I'm gonna give you guys here is in the classwork section. You'll notice that class number one says that this assignment was posted on July 23rd. Google Classroom number two says due August 16th. It is very important that you attach due dates to your assignments. A couple of reasons. Number one, we want our students to know the deadline for this assignment. That doesn't mean that you stop accepting them after that date. It just means that that's when at least the rough first uh, version of it gets submitted. Number two, if the assignment does not have a due date, technically it's never late or overdue or missing. So I, as a parent, if I sign up for that weekly email um, report from Google Classroom and none of the assignments have due dates, then when I get that report, if my child is missing five assignments, but none of those assignments have a due date, it will never pop up. It'll say that there are no missing assignments because none of them have due dates. So it's very, very important that you add due dates to your assignments in Google Classroom. The fourth and final tip that I'd like to share with you guys in this video is the naming structure. Right now, classroom number one is named First Period Korea. Pretty basic, you know, pretty, I guess, self-explanatory if you're in my class. However, if you're a parent looking over your kid's shoulder, trying to figure out what class this is for, we don't know the content. Take a look at classroom number two. Classroom number two is period one, culinary 101, title of the class, and my name in parentheses, Mr. Carrillo. There's no doubt the content, the teacher, and the class period. So make sure that you have some sort of naming scheme for your classroom. Naming scheme for your assignments are also really good to do as well. Make sure that your stream is clutter free with by hiding notifications for your assignments and everything and make sure that you have some topics that way your stream and classroom section of your google classroom are nice clean and organized so there it is ladies and gentlemen four tips for you to start your school year off strong with a clean organized and clutter free google classroom buen provecho